one of my clients in America will be the master of the grand fantasy. And I think that's very apt. What was our approach when we were looking at sort of doing this place up? It was really to create a home of fantasy and lots of different fantasies. But the overriding one was, of course, the Arcadian fantasy of our English country life. We entertain a lot. So we have lunches and dinners. We have friends coming to stay for the weekend. It's sort of fun for us both to plan how to create the best experience for our friends as possible. Martin is a great interior designer. He takes most of the decisions, so I just let him do what he does best. And then I was in charge of the art. And I think it was a similar thing where I would propose paintings and he would trust me and he'd be like, yes, go for it. So that was kind of like the nice split where it was we sort of had our definitive roles where I was art, he was interiors, and it, it sort of works like that quite well. The curtains represent the sort of the divide between what we call the public and the private spheres of the house. The public bit is the drawing room and the kitchen and the entrance, and then the private bit are the two guest bedrooms and the bathrooms. This is our sort of sculpture gallery, what we call it, our John Soane sort of moment, where we've collected all these plaster reliefs. So there's a lot of Peter Hone bits, a lot of bits from Brown Rig. This is a Trump Lloyd painting by Michael Murfin from Henry Miller Gallery. These wall brackets are from Benedict Foley and Guy Tobin as well. All our favourites, basically, here. <laughs> Someone said to us that what this now looks like is John Fowler on acid, which was sort of really what we wanted to create. Architecturally, this room has the grandeur to take gilding. So it was always in my sort of head that if I'm going to paint the room yellow, I wanted to gild details because it's not like it's a white painted corners with gilding, which sort of stands out. It sort of blends in with it. So at the firelight at night or the candles, it will sort of sparkle. Talking about the fireplace that had like, I don't know, 10 coats of white paint on it. And I thought it was the most disappointing fireplace I come across ever until we stripped it of all the paint. And suddenly all of this beautiful carving just jumped out at you. And of course, immediately I thought, I have to gild them. Of course, you know, you can never have too much gold. The art collection was, was really inspired by the country house and our London flat has a lot of contemporary art. So we thought this was a nice excuse to purchase like old masters and more classical feeling pieces. I found this sort of 18th century painting of a, a dog and a sort of still life in Rome that fit the spot perfectly. So we thought that's good. And then that sort of expanded into more dogs down the side, which again is a slight homage to Mario Porta with the sort of the bow. And then the dogs, favorite being Portrait of Zenon, done by James Hayes, who's wonderful. It's salon hanging, but it's all in like mini little collections throughout. It feels organized in my head at least. Lampshades for me are like hats and they're high couture. The inside as well as the outside are very important. So of course, you know, you're sitting on the sofa and most of the time you will look into the lampshade and usually it's very disappointing. So that's why I put a lot of effort in all our lampshades that we do for all our projects, for our home. Actually, we sort of went even one step further. The color yellow has sort of continued from the drawing room because the closer the yellow is to light, the more effective that color is. So because for me, yellow is sunshine in a box. When it comes to a table, more is more. It's all about the layers. On the table, we have plates by Spode. We have napkins and placemats by Maison Magot. And then there's these Campbell Ray glasses, which are really good the wine glasses and, and the water glasses. The cutlery is actually a vintage as well that we bought a whole set of 12 and managed to get hold of very luckily. And the flowers are from our neighbor and friend, uh, Millie Proust, who lives locally. He's in charge of drinks, I'm in charge of food. I think that's, yes. that's the yes. division of labor. Well, I've never had a bedroom like this before, and it's an extravagant joy to sleep here, to spend time in this room. I wanted to create this sort of heavenly, upholstered paradise. So I used Lusmore, which is Jean Monroe, and which is one of my favorite fabrics, and I always wanted to use it somewhere, and I sort of got my chance. 
to do it here on my own because there was no restrictions. <laughs> Since we're using one pattern fabric throughout, I think it's very important to use a contrasting tape for the walls. So you can understand each wall, where it begins, where it ends. We're using these onion tassels by Samuel and Son on the curtains, and hence as well for the headboard, we used this pink fabric by Pierre Frey Rouge, just to as well separate it from the wall behind. I love these lampshades. They're very interesting because we found this antique embroidered flowers that was last time used on one of the Guinness girls wedding dress from the 1920s. So we used them on both lampshades. The chandelier in the bedroom is actually Murano. It was custom made for this bedroom. One of my favorite is the painting opposite the bed, which is by Oliver Messel of Mrs. Patricia Plunkett of Barbados. This is sort of that sort of story that I had about that fantasy of an American heiress coming to England and what does she need? A fabulous bathroom. So I wanted to create something that sort of had a slight 1920s, 30s feel to it, but at the same time that worked extremely well. The stone we used in the master bathroom was Arabescato, which is the white with a black grey veining, and the Gallo Siena, which is the yellow. And the way I wanted to do it was to sort of polish the floor so you get reflection and the walls are matte. Since we're in the master bathroom and you need to be able to understand what you look like, lighting is very important. So we have these beautiful wall lights by Circa Lighting, which is an American company. And then we have these two star chandeliers. I'm fortunately designed a range of tapware and white goods for drummonds. And I use all my own designs for here because I wanted masses of hot water. I wanted to have that shower experience that you never can really get in London where you're just like getting drenched. We're now in the tent, which is our guest bedroom. A vertical stripe fabric makes the room feel taller. It really accentuates the idea of a tall room, and that was sort of part of the reason I sort of wanted to use it. This sort of like just opens it, but then breaking it up with this other fabric, which is more a square, sort of diagonal pattern. All of the fabrics on the wall and the ceiling I designed myself and it's sold through uh, Christopher Farr. I've slept in this room myself and it is a very different experience when you wake up because you really feel enveloped in the fabric and that's the beauty of it. All of our friends who come and stay in this room, they think it's very luxurious and just love spending time here. The kitchen was a challenge. It's a challenge because you have 3.7 meter ceiling height and you can't really design it in the sort of traditional way with a sort of horizontal cabinetry because what you do above it. So of course the solution was to do the four towers. So each corner has a tower with a finial on it. You need to always some decorative embellishment, super important. And in those four towers, you have one that is fridge freezer, one that's washer dryer, and then one that is the crockery and glasses, and then one that's utility. To have a tapestry in a kitchen probably is quite unusual, but actually it's the motif of a tapestry printed on a canvas. Because if it was a real tapestry hanging in this room, which is a kitchen where you have like, you're cooking, you have smells, you have steam, that probably wouldn't be a good thing. But I wanted something soft on the wall. And again, it's quite dramatic. It's uh, from a company based in Oxford called Heinz of Oxford. We bought some plates that once hung in Nancy Lancaster's dining room and we decided we'll build a theme around that. And then we hung all of these Schwarzy plates and platters on the walls. And then we added some pewter plates for butchness. I'm completely thrilled with the result, not only of what this looks like, but of our life down here and the people that we have met. And it's just so different from London. And it's sort of personally what I needed when we moved is what I needed to be able to just continue working and being creative. The difference between designing for myself and designing for a client is that the home that we do together is about us. And it's a conversation between us, so we sort of make this happen. Normally I had have in the past, when I've done my own flats, sort of been thinking about a little bit like, okay, I'm gonna wanna sell this one day. But with this one, 
Bindersen House, we were just like, go full out. Create that fantasy. It's all about us, how we want to live. 